Hey everybody, it's Romania Black, and we're on the second OVA for Moriarty the Patriot. Oh, the first one was really good. The first one was a nice little self-contained story, had some BL stuff I wasn't expecting. I was excited about it, and so I have no clue what the second OVA is going to be about. I'm assuming that it's going to be taking place, like it's going to be a side story from the manga that wasn't animated, or I, I find that... I feel like the Moriarty the Patriot manga has so much left to offer that this isn't going to be like an anime only story that it's going to be specifically from the manga. So I am excited about that. I am really excited about that and to see what happens in it. But I woke up this morning and was like, you know what? I feel like watching the other Moriarty the Patriot OVA. So the first one I watched when I got off of work and this one I'm like, nope, I, it's a, it's morning. I feel like it's Moriarty mornings and I need some more Shirley M. I really do. I'm really sad that the, after this, I don't know what other anime content we're going to get on Moriarty the Patriot. That's the sad thing is that you would think they, I don't know if they have enough manga content to animate a second season or not. I'm not sure if they have enough to animate 12 episodes or 24. I'm going to eventually read the manga <laughs> at some point. I've got so many other side things I'm working on right now with Seraph of the End and getting ready for like Neon Genesis. So I'm going to have to have some stuff in place there. So I've got a lot of other side projects I'm working on, but I bought the manga volumes. They're there. They're on there. I bought them digitally. They're on my phone, on my computer, ready to go. I just haven't had time to read them yet. So hopefully this winter and hopefully this fall, I'll get a chance once I get the Seraph of the End project I'm working on done. And once I get the stuff, the little one shots that I'm going to be doing for this fall out of the way, then I'll be able to have some time to focus on Warrior of the Patriot. That's what I'm hoping. And so hopefully later this fall, we can get some more. I can do a review of the manga on it or do something with it. So because I, I have missed from watching the first OVA, I have missed seeing Sherlock and Moriarty. I've missed seeing them. And so I want to get more of their more content with them. But We'll see when we get to it, right? So I'm really excited to see what's on this other OVA because I have no clue. It is a complete like mystery box. I have no clue what to expect out of this. I'm pretty excited. So we'll see and dive in, right? So let's not waste any more time. We are going to start Moriarty the Patriot OVA number two. And we're going to do that here in three, two, one, and let's go. So that was really good. <laughs> I had to, um, I kept being like, oh, this is Oran High School Host Club. I, it has been a long time since I've read Oran High School Host Club, but I do have like the first three volumes of the manga. This is from like back, this is a 2009 printing. So this is, this is an oldie. And the sad thing is it was 2009, but it was like the 10th printing. So it was like, Oran High School Host Club is such a classic, but I am, um, I have the first three volumes of the manga and I was like going through this. I'm like, okay, it's been a long time since I've read and watched Oran High School Host Club. But just like seeing the picture of them, like all there together in the garden, I was like, that is this episode. And it's convenient because there are six of them and there are six people in our cast, right? So Tamaki, if we're going to, I also had somebody in the Discord talk about how there's no show, like anime protagonists that are Aquariuses. Haruhi Fujioka is an Aquarius, right? So there's that. But yeah, Tamaki, that's Moriarty. That's William, for sure, Tamaki. Kiyoya was the one I was trying to think of. That's Albert. Albert is Kiyoya in this. And then you have the twins, uh, Hikaru and Kaoru, which I was like, eh, that could be Bond and Jack kind of in this. They both kind of split double duties. Um, Honey is definitely Fred, for sure. And then Mori is definitely Moran. And so I would say that Haruhi, in this case, is Lewis because they're trying to protect Lewis and keep Lewis from being hurt. But I thought that was really cool. I'm like, this episode was so Oran High School Host Club-esque. I thought that was a lot of fun. But yeah, what a cute episode. So I didn't get a chance to say this before we started, but thank you to Rio Kana Musings at Tumblr. Thank you for doing the translations in English for this. Why this is not streaming publicly, I don't know. It needs to be. But Crunchyroll, get on it. But I did like, I like that we got an OVA that is the original OP for the series. And then we had an OVA that touched on the second one. And it makes sense because Bond is in this as well as Jack. So it would make sense that they had the second OP because this technically takes place in the second core. I do like the Moriarty squad having adventures. I like that a lot. Um, I do lament that we did not get any Sherlock and Watson, but you know, we got them in the last one. The last one we focused on him and Lou and William. So 
it's fine. This can be just the Moriarty's and the, their crew, and that's okay. I do love, again, the use of red and how serious this entire OVA was at first, where Albert's like, we have a problem. We have to host a tea party. And Albert, Albert was on point, this, this OVA. I loved him in this. It's great because Albert, Albert is so abhorrent. Like Moran says, he abhors this whole idea of the tea party. Albert hates it because Albert does not like nobility. He doesn't like the concept of having to like, he has to keep up with these societal standards to like play the game for his brother and his cause, but he hates it. And so Albert's like, I cannot stand the idea of entertaining a bunch of these fangirlish women for an afternoon where all they're going to want to do is just try to like, they're going to be like just googly eyes for my brother and I, and it's not going to have any substance. Also want to suggest that basically acknowledging that neither William nor Albert are interested in women. <laughs> because Patterson even comes out and is like, oh, Moran, did you, did you score with any ladies today? And he's like, I was doing my job, so no. Because, yeah, Moran's like the ladies' man. And even Fred, like, but Fred's acting, but still has those, like, blushy moments. But Albert and William, nah. That's why I was kind of hoping for a split second that Mycroft and Sherlock would show up because that's, like, the pairings with those two. But... Mm -mm. did no such luck no such luck getting him in this OVA but that's okay a tea party with the Moriarty's it was as much of a tea party as one would expect and I do like that everyone's talents were utilized Fred is the actor so he could act out the whole thing with the Rose Garden Albert and William can like be the nobles and like do the whole like talking and chit chat Moran's there to like keep crowd control and I like that every person there the ladies were all enamored with like even Jack there was even some girls looking at Jack like you're like 70, but I mean, <laughs> these girls were like horny on Maine. They were just like ready to go to horny jail for these men. Can't say I blame them. The Moriarty crew is a pretty dashing looking group of guys. But yeah, so obviously Albert does not want them coming there because they don't want all their secrets and stuff being found out. They have all this equipment there. They don't want it discovered. And so I like that they hired Herder to just be like the ears down in the basement. I kind of felt bad herder though because they totally forgot him they left him down there I'm like Moran you're getting drunk with Patterson don't forget about herder like I forgot about him I do like him I mentioned in the reaction he kind of has a Lloyd vibe from he's the he's the ancestor of Lloyd from spy family <laughs> I know that's a fictional world and it's not real like really connected but I want to say that when we got this whole when we got the it was kind of like a visual fake out when we got the silhouette of all the women and they're in black like dark purple and there's like the kind of vibrant purple behind them it my eyes were playing tricks on me for a second because it looked like it looked like poison dripping on the page and it's one of those things where you see you look at a picture and you can kind of see two objects one or the other I saw like the background first and it looked like like poison dripping and then I realized it was their silhouettes and I was like oh so that was a really cool visual trick to kind of have that with both of them. But yeah, these these women are unpredictable. They're chaos, and so they have to be prepared for it. And so they each have their separate roles. I really thought that Bond would stay in the manor the whole time, and that's why they wouldn't detect the people in his room. But again, they kind of planned for it. They hid everything so nothing could be found. But still, I was expecting Bond to stay in the manor the whole time. But I guess nobody's in there, and they need crown control. Makes sense. But yeah, so Lewis gets stuck in the kitchen. Of course, he makes friends with everyone. Everyone loves Lewis because I'm glad that Lewis got some admirers in this because I was afraid, kind of like with Herder, that they get shoved away to the side and not get any like fangirling towards them. But no, Lewis gets some. Poor Herder doesn't, except for that woman that lost her dog. And she only really gets fangirly because he gives her a, a harness <laughs> that William gave just for these, for such circumstances. I'm like, who predicts a dog getting in the cellar that they have a harness ready for him? But William is prepared for anything. And I like that he's like, only you can do this, Lewis. Only you can manage the kitchen. Which is not a lie, but it's kind of like, you know him and Albert are so protective over Lewis and they want to protect him so much that they're kind of like, oh, only you can do this, Lewis. And it's like, mm, okay. But I get where they're coming from and it's sweet. And Lewis gets all blushy-faced. He's like, oh, thanks. I'm glad I can help you, brother. Which it is good that he gives him a job. It is good that Lewis just isn't held up in a room somewhere. And I love Bond and Moran in this series. I We're talking about Patterson when he's like, do you score with any ladies? I'm like, well, I, I kind of want Bond and Moran to be a pairing in this series because I kind of, when Bond kind of transitioned in their episode, 
from being Irene Adler to being Bond, and then they had the follow-up episode where they all worked together, like, as a Moriarty crew for the first time, and Moran's kind of subversion of gender roles and gender identity kind of gets subverted a bit. I liked that episode a lot because Moran kind of, at the start of it, was like, oh, you're a woman, you, you can't do these things, and Bond is like, well, look, hear me out. <laughs> And so by the end of the episode, Moran not only comes around, but totally respects Bond and totally like wants to become besties with them. And so I kind of ship Bond and Moran for that reason. I feel like that their relationship would be really, really interesting to explore in the manga, especially considering the time period that's written in, considering like Bond and their role in the story, considering Moran being like a womanizer. And so I feel like you could do a lot of cool things with that pairing in this series. So I kind of root for Bond and Moran, even if they say like platonic besties, I still feel like it's a good thing for Moran to be friends with Bond. I still feel like it's a good thing. So that's really cool. But yeah, so the day of the tea party arrives and I love that Albert's just like, <sighs> Albert's like, it's a nice day out. <laughs> like he was just waiting for it to get rained out. He was like, I was really hoping it'd be like a torrential downfall and downpour and we could just, but in hindsight, it's probably a good thing that, that the weather is nice because then they can keep them all outside and not have to be stressed so much like having them indoors where they would cause a ruckus, right? So it's probably probably for the best that happens. But man, uh, they all have their duties and everything, but these women just showing up with the carriages. I like that they gave Herder like, they gave Herder a bunch of like circles of wisdom to fix. I'm like, could you not give him anything else to do? I, I feel like the weakest plot line in the OVA is definitely Herder because Herder literally has nothing to do but sit there. And I was like, I kind of feel bad for Herder a little bit. I feel bad for his character. But yeah, then all these carriages show up. And I, I got like, obviously the Oron High School Host Club vibe with the tea party itself and with the way that the women are acting. But ju there's just something about the way, and I know it's time period appropriate, but something about their hats and the colors, mainly the colors, like the color scheme and everything. It reminded me of Howl's Moving Castle. It reminded me of like all the women, like in the hat shop. It reminded me of that for some reason. And so I really like it though. But yeah, these girls, and of course, our, our boys with all the flowers representing them. So you have Albert, obviously, is represented by roses. Roses are my favorite flowers. So I, I'm, and green is one of my favorite colors. So Albert's whole scheme is like right up my alley. And then you have, obviously, William represented by the lilies. But then you have, it looks like, I think Lewis was daffodils. And we saw him in the kitchen. And I think you have violets with Jack. You have like, is that chrysanthemums? For one and then you have like pansies for another interesting we have all these different flowers i know some flowers but i'm not great with all of them and of course these women are like just awestruck by everything here of course because albert's like i spare no expense he's like my thing is when i do something i do it well so i'm i'm not happy about this tea party because i'm gonna have to make it look nice and so yeah then they have the gardens and everything and I just, I love that they're, everybody's like drinking tea. And for a split second, I was getting kind of morbid with it. I'm like, I think I just put them all to sleep. <laughs> and then when the tea party's over, they're like, oh, it's time to go. Whoops. But no, instead, they have this moment where it's all quiet. And then they just, they just storm them. They just absolutely storm them. I'm like, this is why celebrities need security. <laughs> because, because otherwise you have situations like this. Where they're like, oh my God. And Albert, like Moran's like, do I step in? And Albert's like, oh no, I got this. And he's like, ladies, he's like, a tea party should be more refined. So when you just like storm at us like this, like how can I talk to you all if not one-on-one? -on -one? Like we need to calm down. Like Albert's a pro. Albert is such a pro at handling the situation. And, and then it just kind of calms down from there. But we have these girls like asking Moran to accompany them to the gardens. He's like, I'm so sorry. And for a moment I was, again, this shows Moran's growth in the series because you know that he's like a womanizer and a part of me was like would he run off with a lady but no he takes the mission seriously and also I think he's into Bond so there's that but yeah and then Fred Fred being like oh these are bourbon roses the the artwork on the roses in this like the animation was good throughout this entire OVA the animation was great but some of the artwork on the roses it wasn't photographic, but it looked like a painting and it was beautiful. I was like, oh my God, like it was really, really pretty, especially like the bourbon rose scene. But then he like, when he has a little blush, he's like, thank you for your compliments. Like Fred won everybody over in this. I was like swoon. I was, I was right there with the girls, like his whole swoon thing. And then he like, he gets this whole situation. Like for a second, 
he's like, you broke the rose plant. But then he like maintains his composure and just him taking off the tie to tie her hand up. I was like, oh, that was, that was swoon worthy. I was all for that. Mm -hmm. Just those little gestures. Like, it's great. Like, each of them has a moment to shine. Fred has his moment in the garden where everything's really great and the girls went over him. The one guy breaks the teapot and Lewis wins him over. Lewis is like, it's okay. And he, like, steeps, makes the tea for his brother and everything. And everyone's just like, Lewis. Like, all the, the Downton Abbey crew fell for Lewis hard. I was like, I loved it. And just him with the daffodils behind him. And so I, I do like that we have these one girls, the girl with the Gabby haircut from Attack on Titan as the anime bangs. Of course she'd be up to no good. Of course she'd be up to trouble. Um, her and the one girl investigating William's room, you're like, you knew that was going to happen at some point. But I like the kind of bait and switch that you see this woman acting very suspicious and you're like, what is she doing? And she turns out to be really innocent. She's just looking for her dog. She's not even trying to gossip with anybody. She's trying to find her dog that she brought to this party didn't have it on a leash for whatever reason. And she even calls it her child, so maybe that was a translation issue. But, yeah, I like that they have, like, a little place where they eat the desserts. Albert is, like, Albert is, I want to see what this says. Albert is entertaining them. And then we cut to William. And William is doing a thing. He had a little board here, and I wanted to read it. It's a therapy of color. And he said, uh, the, the color wheel, yes on unison and colors. And he talks about like dress design and accessory. So it's like red dress goes with black and then white dress goes with ruby red. And you also have purple, green, and like blue, purple. It says red and green equal. Orange two thirds, blue one third, yellow three fourths. And then um, there's something that says like, I don't think violet one third. And it says lilies and plumes. So roses, lilies, and plumes. It's funny that he says red and green are equal on that because it's kind of a funny little thing to tie him and Albert together because William's color scheme is red, Albert's color scheme is green. So it's saying that they're on equal footing, which they kind of are in this episode, both like in how they handle the party and then them watching over Lewis. So that's really clever. I like that a lot. And then there is the, there is this woman with the makeup that is just like, like, grinding up on William and he's like <laughs> and when she's like he's a kind man who would never hurt a fly I'm like oh honey you don't know and I love that William's like someone help me this woman is like grinding all up on me and Moran's like if I just pretend like I don't see anything I can't be called to help and it's like ah and Jack walks away too like nobody wants to help William they're like we ain't touching this with a 10 foot pole you're on your own <laughs> Oh my god, poor poor William. And then the plot line just leaves it. They just leave him. They're like they're like he sorted it out. It's fine. But I'm just like nobody wanted to help him. That's so great. That's so great. And then yes. So Bond, I like that Bond gets a hand signal from Rand like go inside. All the ladies are like all up on Bond like yes, please. And then I got a little nervous when at first when she pulled the book out of the family and then like in the family photos for a moment, I thought that, like, her pulling out the book would, like, activate a secret door or something, but they would not let that happen. And then when they found the cane and were about to pull out the sword, I was like, ooh, but it was a trick cane with the flowers, and they think that he's just being funny. And I like Bond's, like, let's head back, wink, and it's like the Lucille Bluth, wink, the, let's go, and they're all like, oh my god, and so crisis averted. And William's like, everything that's bad for the public, we've kind of hid away. So we should be okay. It's just in the basement where this lady who has a carnival dress on is trying to find her dog. I got a little worried for a second because they, they do a really good fake out where Herder pulls the gun out. I was like, are you really going to like aim a gun at this woman? Like that's kind of dangerous. Luckily for Herder and for everybody else, she finds the wine cellar instead I was just like, oh, but that was a really good fake out. I was like, ooh. And then he finds the dog and he gets her, the dog with the harness. Interesting. We're not going to ask the mechanisms of how a blind man found the harness or where it was or how he put on the dog. We're not going to worry about that. <laughs> He's capable of it, I'm sure. Yes. And so then all the ladies, they all get, they all got a rose to take with them. Isn't that magical? 
They all got a rose to take home. How nice. And Albert's like, get out. <laughs> and he's just like, he's like, bye. And there's like all the roses behind him. I do like that the ladies, though, I will say this. They were trying to hide Lewis. And I was worried that like nobody would give Lewis any love. But the ladies were actually considering where he was. And I thought that was really cute. I was like, okay, cool. They're actually questioning about Lewis. Because that was my, you know, Lewis is a Moriarty brother too. And you hate the idea that he'd be left out. So I kind of liked that they were like, oh, where is he? And they're like, maybe we'll see him again soon. And Albert's like, not on my watch. And then they both are like, everything went according to plan. Smart moves. And then Lewis is like, I took care of everything. And they're like, good on you, Lewis. And just protecting their little brother. I do love at the very end here when Patterson finally shows up and Bond and Fred are both like passed out with the blankets wrapped around them. It's super cute. And Moran's watching them, of course, because like Fred's his bestie and Bond's his bestie too. And I like Patterson comes in. I thought he had bourbon, but it was wine. The bottle was just uh, orange. I do love the translation that Cause Musing has where he's like, you want some wine? He's like, thanks, man. <laughs> I was like, that was a great translation. I was like, thanks, bro. Thanks, bro, for bringing me some wine. Nice bottle, bro. And so uh, he said Lestrade was going to come. He turned down Lestrade's invitation to come here. Mm, so he didn't invite Lestrade. Interesting. And so they have their wine. And he's like, oh, he's like, tell me, you didn't, you didn't lay a hand on any of the ladies, did you? And he's like, I didn't have time to. I was busy doing my job. It's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And so then they both, and he's like, I think I forgot something. And he forgot her her. No, this was really cute. I liked this a lot. It was super, super cute. It was like, again, a very, very self-contained story, just like the last OVA. Um, nothing crazy bearing on the plot overall. Just a nice character development between all of them. And I did, I think that I liked the plot of the first OVA better, but I liked the character work of this OVA better. So I feel like the plot of the first OVA was more like dynamic and fun. This one was fun, don't get me wrong. I liked the, the host club angle a lot, but I feel like I liked the character work in this one more because we got more with the characters and developing their bonds and relationships. I liked that a bit more. So, so they both were really good in their own right, but I'm really sad. We get like a taste of Moriarty anime content and then it's like... Phew. So it, it has made me want to read the manga a lot, but I've got these other projects I need to get done first. But hopefully this fall, I've got like manga volumes one through eight. I'm going to sit down and be able to like read and start going through um, later on this fall. That's my goal anyway. That's, that's my goal. But I'm excited to get to that point. So we shall see. But I'm very curious to know your thoughts down below about these OVAs. Um, what you all thought about them. If you liked them. I thought they were really cute. Um, they were a nice little, a nice little like spoonful of Moriarty after you've been starved from it for the last several months. So... And maybe hopefully we'll get a season two one day. Fingers crossed anyway, so we'll see. But in the meantime, I hope y'all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and yeah, I'll be back very soon with more reactions. Bye.